once it's a decentralized platform. So he did say, you know, Ethereum was a security. He did point that out, that it was a security the way they launched themselves. But now it's basically too late. The years have gone by and it's like it's not worth proceeding at this moment because it's no longer a security. I would posit that they raised money against the securities laws of 33 and 34. And, it's, and the SEC has come out and said that we're pliable. OK, <laughs> that, that's their choice. All right. Well, we're going to uh, take a break. And when we come back, it'll be uh, Simon Dixon. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to go to the Isle of Man and speak with Simon Dixon of Bank to the Future. Simon Dixon, welcome back. Hey, Max. Thanks for having me. All righty. Let's get into some heavy-duty crypto action here. The SEC official, they shocked the global crypto community when he declared that Ether is not, in fact, a security. Uh, what argument did the SEC make to support this? And do you agree, Simon? So this kind of falls into your wheelhouse over there, over there at Bank of the Future, what you guys do. So how was this interpreted, Simon? Um, so what the SEC came out and stated is that Bitcoin and Ethereum are not securities because they're sufficiently decentralized. Um, and therefore, uh, what it proved is that you can sell something as a security because there's no doubt uh, they didn't comment, but they did leave out the um, information stating that Ether, when it originally started, probably was a security because it didn't exist and it was something they were selling to people and people were purchasing it with the expectation of a return um, and therefore it meets the definition of a security. But over time, they've stated that it's become sufficiently decentralized whereby um, something can start as a security and morph into a non-security. Now, this is very interesting for the crypto market because it's the assumption of how ICOs are sold now. So initial coin offerings are where you offer uh, the world um, to purchase your token in exchange for a cryptocurrency um, to launch some kind of network or decentralized token or something else. Um, but uh, by, by stating that Ether is not a security, it's essentially allowed for the innovation to grow in this market um, and th for these things to be sold in compliance with securities laws, but later can still trade on crypto markets where if they merge into not being a security, um, like what happens with Ether. It's been a question for quite some time now. What exactly is uh, Bitcoin? What are cryptocurrencies? Are they securities? Are they currencies? Are they bonds? Are they commodities? So apparently the SEC is saying that it's some kind of a morphing, shape-shifting, quasi-entity that can, like a chameleon, be, go from being um, a, a, not a security upon when it's offered, and then it becomes a security later. So, But as you point out, Simon, it seems as though the regulator in this case is kind of tipping their hat to innovation, that they're, they're saying that um, we don't want to clamp down on this space too hard. We want to give it some room to grow. Is that your perception? Well, yeah. I mean, you've got to remember that the whole world wants to take the, you know, crypto and blockchain, Bitcoin is where all the jobs are, where all the growth is. You know, bankers are, are realizing that they don't want to work for banks anymore. They want to be involved in a crypto, blockchain, Bitcoin startup, whatever that perception is. All countries all around the world are experiencing double digit growth in terms of employment, all the money's going in, all the investments going in here. The whole world wants to see the disruption of uh, traditional banking and finance, and nobody wants to be a part of the legacy system. So um, the SEC realized that if they don't embrace this sector, then there's every country in the world that wants to disrupt Wall Street, that wants to disrupt Silicon Valley, and they will take all the jobs, all the innovation, and the complete reinvention of the financial markets. Um, so the SEC really has no choice. If they want to protect Silicon Valley, Wall Street, um, and all the entrenched interests, they have to embrace this sector, which is really what came from this, uh, this whole you know, Bitcoin experiment, that Bitcoin is now disrupting central banking, um, and Ethereum has come along and now started to disrupt Wall Street with IPOs. Um, and now people are deciding that they, the worst place in the world to be is Silicon Valley because you can go offshore um, and you can raise significantly more money than you can raise in Silicon Valley. And now, you know, with Ethereum, not, Ether not being a security, it's opening up complete global markets 
Um, and that's a real problem for Wall Street. Um, and so the SEC needs to make sure that they are you know, embracing that before everything goes outside of America. So walk me through what is happening. Let's call it jurisdiction shopping. So this industry, this crypto industry, it's highly mobile. It it's, uh, can move wherever the jurisdiction is friendliest. And there have been a number of places that have said, hey, we want to be the Switzerland of crypto. And as a matter of fact, Switzerland has said they want to be the Switzerland of crypto. Isle of Man, where you are now, has made uh, kind of gestures in that um, direction. You know, Hong Kong uh, was in the running. Singapore's in the running. Can you give me a bird's eye view of where the best jurisdictions are currently for crypto and how you see that? Because it, it is pretty dynamic and it changes every few months, uh, Simon. Yeah, I mean, it's constantly changing and governments are making their decisions of where to go. And everyone has to make a decision and every country will have to make a decision. And I believe that crypto is going to shape their political future and campaigns um, and who gets them, um, you know, elected in the future, as we can see, based upon their crypto policies. So you've got one approach, which is do what China did. China said that we're going to um, make exchanges and we're going to get rid of them all and we're going to make um, exchange, you know, we're going to get rid of all the exchanges. Now, the problem is, is that there's all people in China that are doing mining. And when